So in this episode, we're going to look at two things, which are game events and sounds. And I've been working on some code up until now, the behind between the last episode and this. And to give you an example here, I've made a Wraith King stun, which has a particle effect and a sound effect. And I've also made a custom blink dagger. So in the first slot is the normal blink dagger. In the second slot is my custom blink dagger, which is no sound. And we'll add a sound to that. And what we're going to look at is, can we do something when Sven dies as well and listen into that event? So now let's look at our code. Now I said I wrote some code since last time. And in here in add on game mode Lua, there's here's this line is an example of listening to a game event. And what it does is that when this event happens called NPC spawned, it will call this function called on spawn and using this class. And what this here is a dynamic wrap. It pretty much links the class and the function together so that you effectively are just calling this function down here uh, when this event happens. So it's relatively straightforward to what we've been doing so far, except that we're assigning the function to be called for this event. Now, where do we get all of the name of these events that we can listen to? Now in here, there is a, a page in the API called built-in engine events. And some of these are broken, so you might want to print out to make sure that the it's returning what it's supposed to. So we are going to find an event called Entity Killed. And this is the one that we're going to use here called Entity Killed. And what this does is that it will return a bunch of extra arguments here uh, for Entity Index Killed, Entity Index Attacker, Entity Index Inflictor, and Damage Bits. I don't know what damage bits is yet, but we can print it out and see what it looks like. Uh, I think there is someone who's probably documented that somewhere. So this is going to be the name of our event. So we need to go listen to game event. And this is the name of our event here. Then we need to do a dynamic wrap. And we're going to go self, which is this class. And we'll go and we need to create a function and we're going to call that function in a minute. Uh, on unit killed and we'll go self and self is the context I think it's just the name of this uh, game mode or game add-on so we need to create this function called on unit killed and we're gonna go add it here we'll just make some space for it function battle arena which is the name of our add-on and we'll go end now if we want to access those variables that were passed in we need to go and get them here we can go like args and then each one can be accessed with args int index killed i think that's the unit that's killed some of these don't have any description so entity killed entity attacker and uh, these are all the different ones and they can be accessed like this so so if we go like this and we have the damage bits, which is the last one. So these are all the ones that are passed in. And right now we're just going to look at the first two. Or yeah, yeah, we're going to look at the first two. So the entity index killed. And if we want to convert this uh, to a, a handle script, what we need to do is there's a function called int. I think it's called, let's see what it's called here. It's like int to handle h script. So int index to h script, it's called. So we use this function here, which is a global function. So we can call this anywhere. And our index is being passed in here as the entity index killed. And what this will return is a handle script for this. Um, unit so it's a unit that's been passed in now if it fails to do this i think it returns nil so we'll just check to see if it's not nil and if it is nil we'll just do nothing because it's probably some sort of error but it's a good idea to check for nil either way so if unit uh so then we want to go and see if the unit is a hero uh if unit is hero then do something because what can happen is this will also listen into 
any other unit that's dying so I think it will detect towers it should detect uh, creeps or any sort of neutrals and stuff like that uh, so you do need to check to see what type it is and there's different ones to check here with is hero in the I think it's base entity that or base NPC I think it's called the class so if it's a hero we're gonna go uh, print uh, killed hero and we'll go dot dot unit get name so that should print out and then we could go like this as well uh, if we wanted to do this for the attacker we could do the exact same thing and get the attacker uh, h script as well so we could access all of the class for the attacker but we don't really care about that right now and if you wanted to do some other stuff like giving extra gold or something like that that's coded in you could do it here but I think there's ways of already dealing with uh, that somewhere else but if you had some sort of anything that you want to do any sort of logic here you can do it in this location so if we go back to our game mode now and we kill this Sven when we kill him we look at the console it says killed hero Sven or NPC Dota hero Sven and that's pretty straightforward we've listened to an event and wrote a little bit of logic with it and you might want to write anything else you want with it too but what we're going to move on to now is sound so if you notice here my blink dagger the first one which is the real one plays a sound every time but our other spell does not every time we blink we need to make a sound effect for this and we need to the, this blink is a little bit flawed as well in another way but we're not going to fix that this episode and what I want to do is show you an example of the Rake King thing I've been doing so what it does is it literally just creates a targeted projectile along here and it uses the Hellfire Blast particle and luckily for us because we're only going to use for this game mode we're only going to use this spell on Rake King and no one else we do not need to pre-cache raking's particle effects for this uh, thing we could if we wanted to but i don't think there's much point i think you might have to actually if the player has like an arcana or some sort of thing it might load up those ones rather than the default but because i'm only using the default one i don't know if there's there actually is isn't there there's some particle effect for raking's stun there's like a red version of it i think so you might want to like pre-cache these as well and where you pre-cache these is back in add-on game lua up near the top and there's a function called pre-cache and you can call your pre-cache resource here so i actually am pre-caching this particle as well now one of the ones that you probably don't need to pre-cache though is sound events so in here there's a function that's also a global function which is after this which emits a sound and it emits hero dot skeleton king hellfire blast and it puts it at the position of the caster which is rake king now you can also uh pre-cache these sound events and what how these work is that let's copy and paste this over to our blink dagger code i'm going to open up my um item custom blink so the way that blinks work or items work as well is pretty much the same as abilities you can go on spell start and there's a slightly different kv file and we'll look at that in another episode but for now you'll just uh, it's the logic of the code is almost identical to what would be happening with your abilities so a lot of this, this is really good because everything you've been learning with ability up until now can be applied to this what we want to do is when we cast it we want to play a sound on the caster as well so we're going to change this here so we need to find out what our sound event is named and we're going to emit this sound on the caster's position and i think the sound follows where the caster as it's moving through space and stuff so you can just emit this sound let's go uh, to this page here which is uh so let's go to this page here which is a game tracking for dota and this essentially is a extracting a lot of the built-in stuff for dota and one of the places we want to look at is sound events so if we look at these here there's a bunch of different files but what we want is the sounds of the heroes so we can go into game sounds heroes and here are all the different heroes what we care about is skeleton king 
which is the name in game for Raid King. Uh, they never changed this, but that's just the naming convention they have. But here you can see this is an event here called Hero Skeleton King Pre Attack. So if you use this as in this location here back in our code, emit sound Hero Skeleton Pre Attack, it will play that sound event. Now, if we just have a quick look here, what is a sound event? Well, it plays a variation of three different sounds and then it has a different volume, minimum and maximum volume. It has like a random pitch, so it randomizes the sound slightly so that each attack sounds a little bit different each time. And that ends up happening with pretty much most spells here. You end up seeing, I think Earthshaker has two or three different sound effects for his uh, Echo Slam and things like that. And that goes on, there's a huge amount of sounds in Dota, but what we care about is a sound event and we just need to get the name. So. For example, Hero Skeleton King Dead. What we want though is not a, a hero sound. What we want is an item sound. So I don't know where exactly these are. So we'll have a look now. But one of the ones you might want to look at is VO scripts, which is voice actor scripts. So these are for the voice actors. And we're not going to touch them because uh, those are automatically there. And if you want to add extra sound effects for uh, casting spells and stuff I think you can do that too but what we want to do is look for items so is there one here for items there we go game sounds items dot vs and d e v t s so here there's tango active so we want to go blink so blink dagger active and then there's blink dagger nailed it and okay so what this does is in Dota, for people who are not aware, uh, Blink Dagger has like a cast range where it's 1,200 units. And if you blink too far, it will reset you back to a maximum of 960 units. So what this is doing is that it, um, the Blink Dagger nailed it. It'll play a different sound, which is slightly louder. It's the same. It's a different sound effect, actually, because if we look here, Blink nailed it dot VSND, which is the sound and it plays a, it's a different sound effectively for when you do a maximum range blink correctly without over committing the range. So it's kind of like a skill based thing if you want to put it that way. It's not very apparent, but if we want to put it in here, we can go emit sound item blink dagger get caster. Luckily for us, I have already done the logic here for calculating the cast range. So we're going to put this in, see if we're, greater than the cast range we're going to play this sound effect and if we're at the shorter cast range we're going to play this other one which is nailed it and we want to put this down here so this will now play this however this will work perfectly when we're in our game mode as uh, because we're the host we need to ensure that this is uh, being pre-cached as well for our game mode so I think the items by default should be pre-cached uh, because they're loaded up automatically unless you have the items disabled. So if we go back here to add on game mode and there's one here that says how to pre-cache a sound file. So this is our sound file and we need to go to whatever this file is called here. And or no, what we need to do is we need to go to the asset browser and find that sound. So if we go over here to our asset browser and we need to look at, we need to find this file and find the existing directory. So we want to filter by sound event. So there's sound event script. So we're only seeing sound events. So we were using the items one, wherever items is. Let's type it in here, item. Okay, here we go. I, I think you will pre-cache it anyway, just in case. So we're doing a sound file, boom, that's in there. That's the sounds done for the items. And we also wanna pre-cache. Oh, I've already Skeleton King pre-cached, right? So that's perfect, right? So all we're doing is pre-caching that sound thing to make sure that we have this pre-cached. It's loaded up when we load the game. So now that our game's loaded up, let's listen to the sounds. And now I'll do the maximum range blink, which will be a little bit different. Let's 
So you see that they're different when they're at closer range or at maximum range. And if I do a, an out of range blink then, so I get the, oh wait, so I have the logic done a little bit wrong here as well. So I've just changed the logic pretty quickly so that there's a separate conditional statement just for the sounds. So let's go and see what that looks like when we go into our game mode, we click here. This is our normal blink. And now when we go long range, we're still over committing, that's too far. But if we look at the range in total, we blink out to here, we get a separate sound effect. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more custom game tutorials, make sure you subscribe.